Hello and welcome to Talk of the Game. It's match preview of FCSB against West Ham United. Match day six of the Europa Commerce League. A bit of a dead rubber, rubber this one. West Ham already guaranteed top. FCSB already guaranteed bottom. Um, Gonzo, do you remember much about them? Uh, yeah, I've, I must be honest. I've got to add a, add a, add a glance back. Um, so, yeah, this was the one that Downs uh, made his... Well, put his mark on the on the team really. Uh, played uh, central midfield, um, got man in a match. It was a, a really good. Uh, Antonio came off the bench, scored a really good goal. Um, it was a really good, important part of uh, of Bonner's rehabilitation this game as well, because obviously we weren't able to get him any games in the Premier League, but well, we we're still not. But um, but it's, this was part of his road to recovery, and, and I think the really possibly the game where a uh, Kera announced himself as uh, as okay I I'm I'm your I'm your new defender basically so yeah it was a was a good game and a 3-1 win it's almost fitting that you're talking about occasions rather than the opposition in a weird way because we're going to get onto that in this video as well it's more perhaps more about the occasion than the game itself um yeah I don't recall too much but I think I'm losing my memory as I get my older going so I had to go it back happens. and watch a bit as well and I was thinking I was like we're one nil down half time were we and I was like well we must have been in we were as I don't recall that so I had to go back and watch our Review of the game to talk my memory back from the, from this one. Anyway, uh, we're FCSBR at the minute. Like I said, there's nothing for them to play for in this group. They're currently seventh in the league, just outside the championship group as their league splits in two and then goes on top lot play each other, bottom lot play each other, the relegation group. So they're just inside the relegation group at the minute. However, domestic form isn't looking too shabby. They lost at the weekend, but won the four games previous to that. So they're pick, they're starting to pick up points and starting to play a little bit better. But Gonzo, is this where we sort of reap the rewards of five wins from five and winning the group the game to spare? Yeah, absolutely. And, and fully deserve, richly richly deserved that we can rest for this game and and it gives Moyes something because there's you know he, he doesn't like the fixture congestion and there are a lot of teams big teams English teams in Europe this this week who are going to have to field their best teams they haven't quite made it through so that that's a massive one I'm, I'm pretty sure Manchester United would have um I mean look, they beat us what the bloody hell do they care but I'm pretty sure they would have really liked to have just concentrated on their two subsequent league games and not worry um, about having to play in Europe, but they're going to have to at Tottenham as well. They, you know, there's clubs that really have to have to really buy into this fixture congestion and and just feel their teams. Whereas we don't have to. We Moyes can do exactly what he wants here, and what he wants is to, you know, maybe play a youngster or two, um, keep nursing those players uh, like a Bonner and a Gerd uh, back from injury, give game time to players maybe like Sue Fowl uh, who aren't featuring at all. So it's it's perfect. You cover all three bases, basically. Play play some reserves, play some youngsters and uh, get some injured players fit. Wonderful. Yeah, I completely agree. He can prioritise the Crystal Palace game. He can say, right, what's my team? He can work backwards here. Whereas in the other five games, he's had to do a bit of a balancing act, which is kind of work backwards, I guess, but also at the same time think, well, maybe that's a bit too weak. I'm going to have to put a couple of other players in there, perhaps that I didn't want to. For the way games, he's perhaps taking players over there that he doesn't want to use and that are on the bench, he made the journey, so on and so forth. But for this one, he doesn't even have to take some of them with him to Romania because no. actually, you you lot, you just stay back in London. Don't even travel for this one. He very much can pick his 11 for Crystal Palace and work off the back of that and see who he's got left over, build the team around that, build it with a few youngsters as well. But I, I guess it's also the youngsters that he feels may make it at West Ham. We know he's had a couple of them involved in training in the build-up to previous games. We've seen some youngsters on the benches of the European competitions this season already. And I think it's a wonderful place to be in as a manager. And, you know, this is what he gets. This is the reward for David Moyes for getting the job done in the first five games. This one is a dead rubber. Do what you want kind of thing. Um, you know, take as many risks or as little risk. And hopefully, and I'll be honest with you, I don't want to see any risks taken by a manager for this one. Crystal Palace is a must-win game to some extent. This one is not. He, he could get beat. It depends, really. If he feels the first 11 and gets, gets beat, I probably won't be too happy about it. However, if he goes heavily rotated and we lose this one, as long as you win against Crystal Palace, I think that is the priority for this week. Uh, now, before we move on to the West Ham team, and I know what you're all thinking, which youngsters are eligible, I will show you in just a second, because not all of them are, and I'll explain why in just a moment. However, 
It is currently the first of the month, which not only means it's the first of the month, it means it's the best time to join the Hammer Chat Patreon if you wish, if you want more videos, if you want discount at our online store, especially with Christmas coming up, then now is the time to join up to our Patreon. Also, you get other things as well, including our giveaways. We've got big raffles every single month. But all the videos, there's loads of them. We've got some World Cups coming up. Don't worry, we're getting creative over on Patreon. But best of all, possibly, is you can support Hammer Chat from £3.60 per month. Go to patreon.com forward slash hammers chat. Links in the description below. You can see the list of all the benefits as well as sign up if you wish and access some more videos and more perks and support this channel. Gonzo, mm. not all youngsters are eligible. Tell me. Tell me which ones are, please, Jim. I will do that. I've got Thank some you. graphics. So according to the UEFA.com website, these are the youngsters that's eligible for West Ham on Thursday night. So we've got Christian a guy, the goalkeeper. We've also got uh, William Greenidge, who tends to be right back. We've got Carl Robinson, Yamal Baptiste, who we're all familiar with as well. Harris Nashby, who's gone AWOL. So we've got Michael Forbes and we've got Ollie Scarls on there too, a name you'll be familiar with this season. Now, moving on to the second list, we've got Kaylin Casey. We've also got Regan Clayton, the left back, who again has been featuring with the first team in training in previous weeks. We've also got Keenan Apaya Forsen. We've got Freddie Potts, as well as Archie Woods, George Earthy and Lewis Orford. And then last but not least, we've got Sawyer, Mubama and Kodua. So there is your youngsters that's eligible. If I've not named them, they're not eligible. So Callum Marshall, uh, Equa, who some of myself and Gonzo would like to see, they're not eligible. Oh, it's Max my Ham team up. That's Max my team up. Yeah, there's a man that doesn't understand the rules. Despite uh -huh. the fact that I do a guide to the Europa Conference League or the Europa League the last two seasons, explain uh, the rules. I, I did start watching it, but I fell asleep. But anyway, what is well? Let's go through your team then. Um, mm. What would you like to see? Who uh, would you like in goal? Uh, Ariola in goal. Would you? I don't. I don't know why. Well, this is a real modern thing. A, a goalkeeper has got to be rested all the time. I don't think goal. You know, I understand why Moyes right, does okay. it. I no. I'm going to disagree with you here. We've just seen Fabianski get injured. Why would you risk your keeper? He could pick up an injury like Fabianski has done, and then we're down to Dan Randolph against Crystal Palace. And I bet you're sitting moaning about that. I would, I, well, yeah, probably would. Well, but I don't think it is a risk. They're a goalkeeper. They never get injured, apart from the other day. Mm, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Mm. Bear in mind that Fabianski is likely to be injured. I would not be taking Ariola for this one. I'm going oh. with Hergi, the, the under 21s keeper, highly sought, thought of. If you look at the first team official photograph they had a couple of weeks ago, it's quite telling. He's in the photo, he's there, fully kitted out and whatever. Um, I would have him in goal for this one. I, I expect it'll be Dan Randolph, but I yeah, it goes. Think I just don't think you're going to learn anything from having him in goal. There's almost no point to him playing this fixture. Um, so it would be heggy for me. So you're sticking with Ariola, are you? Oh, yeah, yeah. You stubborn, stubborn man. Um, moving into the defence, what would you like to see? Uh, Sufal, Agurd, Ogbonna, Johnson. Uh, Johnson left back, obviously. Sufal, I'll say that again, Sufal. Agurd, Ogbonna and Johnson. They They all need games. So you'd play one of the left-footed players at right centre back. It doesn't matter in this game, yeah. Why, why not? Why not? Yeah, they both they both need to play. Ogbonna and Agurd definitely, but I don't particularly want to switch formation and do the three. No, the I, I understand your dilemma. I've gone with Sufar right back um, mm. for reasons we don't really need to go into. He needs the game time. I've gone with Dawson and Agurd at centre back because I think Dawson looked a bit rusty against mm. Man U and. The difference is with Aguard and compared to Ogbonna is Aguard can feature against Leicester, maybe. Hopefully, we'll see yeah. him independently. I, I don't think we'll see Ogbonna right. against Leicester, regardless of how much minutes he gets. Is an important game for Ogbonna's rehab? Yes, it is. But I'm looking at the Crystal Palace one thinking Dawson could do with a bit of minutes again mm. on Thursday night, and Aguard definitely needs the minutes. So I'm, I'm surprised you'd trying. risk him because uh, Dawson might get injured in this game. He, he might do, he might do, but I would I would start him. I think he needs just a little bit of his mark sharpness back ahead of Sunday's game. And left back, I would go with uh, Regan Clayton, the, the youngster. I think let's get him in, let's have a look. You know, he's 17 years old, and David Moyes has had him training with the first team. He obviously thinks a lot of him. And bear in mind, the, the three of the the other three in the back four are all very experienced. I think you can afford one or two youngsters in your starting eleven. This isn't like Zagreb last season where we're just the 
Tayo back four was from the under 21s. I've got one player, you haven't got any, um, but you may have later Thank on you. the team. So, um, later on the team, what you got? Oh, um, I've got Sawyer at right. Right wing, which is what I wanted. Um, yeah, I, was, I would have gone for that in the previous one as well as you know. I, I did want to play Equa central midfield actually, so which is a shame. So I've had to um, revise my team, unfortunately. There, so um, Swire, Coventry, Lanzini, and Emerson on the left wing. Yeah, I've got, I've gone with Coventry, Lanzini, and Ollie Scarls in midfield, and then I've got Corney if he's available, and Emerson. Um, do you know if Corney is available? Well, he better bloody be. He, I mean, he bloody better be because I'm going to get annoyed if he's not. Uh, quite frankly, um, not not that that should <laughs> that that should uh, have any bearing on anyone's decision, uh, including the manager or Cornet. The Cornet, Cornet going, oh, I better get fit. Gonzo be unhappy. No, it, it shouldn't feature in the decision making. Um, but I, I'm I'm getting quite annoyed at the moment about it actually because I tell you what will happen. Um, it will eventually come back. It's not. It doesn't appear to be a massive injury. He's. he's I don't know. He's. He's got a bruised ego, or so. I don't know something that that's easy to recover from. Um, and then he has a little knockback and all the rest of it. And I know what happened is it gets to the point. If it's just a week or two out, Moyes puts him back in. But what will be is back to square one, where David Moyes will then say, even when he's ready and, and unhurt. David Moyes will say, well, he's not match fit. We need to get him back. And then, oh, well, maybe we'll see more of him after the World Cup. I can see it coming. I, I can honestly see it coming. And then basically, we've got this this new guy who's meant to be our backup um, or, our, or force his way to become our right winger or our left winger. We basically, he'll have missed half the season. That's, that's what we're going to be looking at, right? So he better bloody be ready. And I'm putting him in my team now. <laughs> I hope he's ready as well. I think... You know, we, I still want to win this game. That's the thing. I still want to see a good performance and I still want us to see us get the win. And, you know, somebody made a good point in the build-up show to the previous Europa Conference League game, which was, I want six wins from six. Frankfurt won every single game. I, I want that. I want that momentum. And there's possibly a lot to be said for that, actually. And I still want to win this, hence why I've got... I've only got two youngsters in my team here. Um, all the scars be another one. However, Corny is unavailable. I will say I agree with Gonzo and Sawyer's possibly the one that looks most likely that he could step up into the first team and then play on that right wing too. And there's a big game for Connor Covent. <clears throat> pardon me, a big game for Connor Coventry though. Yeah, I, I think so. I was listening to him speak the other day as well, and it was that was nice. I mean, he'd, you know, he clearly is very fond of West Ham. Um, yeah, it's it's, an, it's another game for him as well. And I think if he plays well, really well, maybe, just maybe, he puts himself into contention for the Blackburn game in some way, shape or form. Which it might is be good. Just, yeah, yeah, for sure. For, absolutely. It sounds like really backhanded, doesn't it? Oh, you might get into the league. But it's, it's, it's good. You're, you're starting to create a little pathway for yourself at a Premier League club in centre midfield. It's a, it's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if it was, um, I'm sure he's not a regular watcher of the channel, but if he were, I would say to him, nicer things than I'd probably say to Cornet, to be fair, but I would say to him, um, you're Alex Crow. I, I don't want him to have an identity crisis. He's not. He's Connor Coventry. But his last season, he's this season's Alex Crow. OK, and all I would say is he's already featuring more than Alex Crow did. And David Moyes always trust, has already trusted him more than, than, um, than he did Alex Crow. Um Flynn Downs. Flynn, mm. Flynn, Flynn, Flynn Downs is Mark Noble, just in we case. We saw a bit uh, of Crow in the first half of last season. Though, in not, the yeah, not, not, not a lot. I, I think he probably trusts him a little a little bit more. But as I say, yeah, Flynn Downs is is Mark Noble. Um, and you know who um, Craig Dawson is, don't you? Who's that then? Craig Dawson. Excellent news. Um, up front, what you got? Uh, well, <laughs> my favourite, Maxwell Cornet and Mikel Antonio. Yeah, I've gone obviously with Antonio. Uh, it sort of picks itself really with my little four two three one formation I've got going on here, or four three three rather. But yeah, I, Antonio for me as well. It's a difficult one actually because you know Skamaka's not done enough in the last three games to really warrant sort of being the undisputed striker. And there's possibly an opening there for Antonio, but I do think the fact that it's Crystal Palace is coming up, that actually Skamaka's possibly the right striker for that game rather than Antonio. It's, it's a bit of a difficult situation for Antonio. He's possibly going to struggle. Um, going back to what we were speaking about at the very start, about how you were listing sort of occasions in the other game, is this game more of an occasion for you in the fact that we can possibly field 
a couple of the youngsters. And I mean, we're talking about corner commentary there. Last week, he was the most inexperienced player in our team. This week, he might not be. There might be two or three players around him that actually have never played in the first team for West Ham. Well, it's just a bloody useful um, fixture. I, I did, um, uh, for those of you, uh, Canning Town Len has got, has got a new film coming out soon. And um, I, I don't want to reveal anything, but during part of the film, I had the opportunity to speak to some ex-players. Uh, David Lovell were talking about reserve team football. And um, and, and I think we, we miss it. I, I do think it's it's a miss there. It's, it's a way of keeping fit. And it's, it's not fully competitive, but it was competitive enough. I think it was, was good for the younger players to play, for young lads to play against grown men and, and things like that. And it was good for players coming back for injury. We don't have that anymore. No, nobody does. Um, and... I think this is this is that this gives us a, a good opportunity. I say an occasion. It's it's a bona fide competitive game that we can really utilise to our benefit for for all those reasons. Massively, and as I said before, it was massively important to Downs. It was massively important to Kara, and it was massively important to Ogbonna. Um That was that was important, and now it's it's important to a to a whole group of other players. Important to a Gerd, it's important to Coventry, um, it's important to well, hopefully, uh, Cornet to Sawyer if he plays to Sue Fowl, who's not Emerson. getting games to Emerson, exactly right. So, um, you know, it this it's it is it is a really really important game. This is it is a dead rubber in terms of the points and in terms of qualifying from the group, but actually, it's vitally important. I totally agree with what you said about leaving some players at home. Uh, he talks about rest, David Moyes. There's no point. I remember in during his first stint, we played a cup game against Everton away. Um, we lost, uh, I think, right Calvert, centre back. Calvert Lewin played, uh, scored lots of goals in it. Uh, maybe he scored three or four goals. But, uh, and he dragged everybody there and didn't play them. Basically, um, we, we we were a little bit down. We were still within touching distance of getting the game. We were only one 0 down at that point. Half time, he had all his what it would have been at the time. His big boys there that he could have brought on, and he just left them all on the bench. And and I remember you and me saying after, why drag them all the way up to Merseyside if you're not going to have the ambition to do that? Now I'm not that this is he doesn't need to to actually say to him, and I'd, I'd say to him, don't go out and do it, do anything. Have the, literally have the night off. Go out. Go who, out for... who, who, who are you referring to here? Because we're not really talking about who we want to see. Who do you not want to see in Romania? Who are you hoping but, just isn't there? Rice, Rice, but it might be a great example because he is he is the captain. Um, Rice would be a good, a, a really, really good one. Zuma, people like that. Don't don't take them and say to him, don't go out and have dinner. You know, go out, go and have. You know, I don't want to go clubbing or anything. Go have dinner with your wife. Sit at home, watch some Netflix, play some Xbox. Do to have a complete the whole day when we're traveling and the whole night. Have it off, just relax. I do think that's important. They do that. Yeah, I would like to see a handful of the players left behind, not even on the bench. Um, Creswell as well, somebody that's you know in his thirties, yep, playing yep. pretty much every week for us and. Jared Bowen, um, up until last Thursday, he was the only player that played started every single game for us in October. Is he in form? No. Could Bowen do with this game to try and get a couple of goals? Possibly. But already this season, actually, I've seen Bowen score two or three goals in a game consecutively this season. And actually, his performances aren't perhaps showing that. He's not yeah. really a confidence player, don't they? I think with Ben Rama. He does something, and then it's sort of chest out, and it, he just gets better and better with Bowie. And I've seen him score and not really get better, actually. His performance just stays the same as it was. So, I, Bowen is one of the top, the first ones I'd be leaving at sure. home, and possibly Suchek as well. So, you've had enough football, just stay in London. Uh, and that's a strong The teams we've named are strong. There's a yeah. lot of experience in there. There's a lot of youngsters that we've just gone through the list. There's a lot of opportunities for youngsters. To take out to yeah on the to bench, take out bench, to Romania. bench full of them, Gio. Bench and, full of youngsters. And when I've gone through my team, you know, I've left out Ben Johnson. You know, Ben Johnson could be there to come on. I've left out a Bonner. There you go. A guard seventy minutes off. You come a Bonner. There you go. You've only got yeah. twenty. Uh, this one, but it doesn't matter. Out you go. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity to still have a few experienced players on the bench and youngsters too. So, um, are you confident for this one? Um. Not really, because I, I don't know what team he's, he's going to put out. I, yeah, I mean, if he put the my, thing is, though, right? my the thing team is, out though, or your team out, yeah, we, we should win it, yeah. The thing is, though, you've got to flip it around. FCSB have nothing to play for as well. So it's not like we're no. going to come up against a team. Uh, no. I wouldn't be surprised if they prioritised their League Cup game over this West Ham one. 
and so they should. Uh, you know, but absolutely. Particularly if there's, there's there is lo- nothing to play for, they they will be saying that basically um, when on their YouTube channel FCSB chat, there'll be a couple of guys there, and one of them will be saying, "Oh, I can't remember what the goalkeeper's name is," but they may be having an argument about whether to play that goalkeeper. One of them will be saying, "Oh no, can't play him against West Ham. He might get injured. Let's play the um, let's play the crap one instead." You know. Um, I'm not talking about Heggy, by the way. Um, so, you know, I, I think they, they should rotate and they should rest. I think that's sensible for them as well. And if they do, do our does our reserve team beat their reserve team? I bloody well think so. Yeah, because we've we got, we got some good players, really good players there, as much as I'm arsing around because, there's, you know, it's hard to take this fixture seriously. Um, hopefully they take this fixture more seriously than I've taken this video. But... Um, you know, you've got players like Lanzini in there who will probably feature. You know, I would imagine Coventry would be better than, than any of their midfielders that they've got there, particularly their, their second string and stuff like that. So, yeah, and it's a, it's a chance. It's not just that. It was a chance to impress because one person that won't get left behind to play Xbox and go out for a meal is David Moyes. He will, he will go. So, actually, it's a chance for Emerson to impress David Moyes. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't matter. Sue Fowl can do what he wants. David Moyes... There's nothing more to discover about Soufal. Um, David Moyes will know everything there is to know about yeah, him. Yeah, but do you not think maybe soufal has got a chance to start against Crystal Palace, or do you think Kerr is definitively the right back? I think even if he wasn't, it would be Johnson that played there. I think he's in the unenviable position of being third choice right back at the moment, um, Soufal. But he still needs the games because it only takes an injury, and you just, you know, you don't know. Um so, but Moyes has got nothing to find out about him, but he's there to keep him fit. Emerson has still got stuff that he would probably want to show David Moyes, you know. Um, and and well, you one, can... one player actually we haven't mentioned is uh, mm. Pablo Finales. Well, he was, was yeah. He, he was in my you team. could argue that actually this is the game where he needs to play and just say, look, you know, at the minute, you're not in the starting 11. There's an opportunity there for somebody to get in on Sunday because Lucas Paqueta... I mean, what about Paquette then? If he was available, would you take him and give him any minutes or just... No. No, I wouldn't. No, not at all. Not at all. I, don't, I do not want to see Paquetta. I think I think all. the difference with Paquetta's injury was it was his, his collarbone. It's not like a, a muscle injury in his leg or anything where he needs to perhaps get a little bit of rustiness yeah. shaking off. You know, even though he's got a collarbone, there's still exercises. Oh, on, I, think, I think we all have. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm not I'm not overly confident, but I'm not confident we're not going to win either. Does that make no. sense? I've almost got no expectation for this game. And no. in a weird way, I quite like it. It feels like I'm a way to watch us play a friendly, but we're not a way to play a friendly. And, yeah. you know, when I said FCSB might not take this seriously, they, they might do, you know, the, the match winnings, 270 grand or whatever it is. That might be a massive yeah, incentive right. for, for them. I don't know the financial situation. Of their club enough, but I think it's easier for West Ham to dismiss that as a, you know an incentive mm. to win the game rather than FCSB. But it's a good opportunity for us to go out there, you know, leave players at home, still feel a strong squad, give a few of the senior players. You, you want to be saying to Antonio, look, come on, you've got to look like one of the best players on the pitch on Thursday night. You just have to. You've got to go out there and just look like old Antonio, get a goal, get a couple of goals, just give your manager a headache. At the minute, is Skamaka's probably starting against Palace? I'd imagine he is. Yeah. But is he definitely starting against Crystal Palace? I would like to think not 100%. Well, there you go, Antonio. Go knock that 80% likeliness that Skamaka's starting. Knock it down to 60% by putting in a big performance. Give your manager, when he's on the plane home, early hours of Friday morning, sit there thinking, flipping out. Mikhail was on a different level last night. He's deserves a start on Sunday, you know, what, mm. what we're going to do with that. Put finales in there, let's see something. And a, a lot of these boys are playing for a future at the football club. You know, Common Commentary is playing for a future at West Ham. His contract's up in the summer. Does he want a new deal or not? So Fowles out of contract in the summer. Oh, but on that, there's, a, there's a lot of players that could be playing there. There's arguably, we don't know if they'll be here next season or not. So there's a lot on the line for these. And while it may not result in anything in terms of the fact that West Ham's already won the group, actually, there's a lot of repercussions off the back of a good or possibly poor individual performance in this one. So while me and you are sat here as fans saying, you know, there's not much up for grabs, the people that have paid their hard-earned cash and they're getting on a plane today, tomorrow, for the first thing, yeah. Thursday fly, they're going to be saying something, oh, no, I want them see a performance. I've travelled all the way out here. Yeah. I, spent my, I spent my money. I deserve to see something. They'd be right to say that. You know, but 
you know, Moyes would be saying, come on, boys, I need to see something from you all here. There's a lot for you to play for individually, although there's nothing for West Ham potentially to achieve in terms of group positions. There is a lot up for grabs going forward off the back of this game. And I want to see that. I want to see an attitude that shows we're not taking this game lightly. I want to see a team selection from Moyes, which shows he's prioritising the Crystal Palace game. But I want to see an attitude from the players selected that actually this game is important to them. For, for various different reasons. So I'm looking for something. I want to see something. And do you know some, do you know what I would like to see, Gonzo? A bit of entertainment, some good football. It's been a yeah. bit boring. It's been a bit... It has at been At times, boring. it's been a little bit boring. Right. Moyes justified. I wait a man, you... Right, okay, I get it. I get why you're going to keep it tight and it's going to have to be a bit boring at times, okay? But a way to FCSB when there's nothing to put... No, there's no excuse for going out there and hanging on to a 1-0 win or anything like that. Let's have a bit of entertainment, please. You know, um, yeah, and and let's be fair. I, I think if I've got this right, didn't Silky Ball beat them 10 0 on aggregate? They did 5 0 uh, both games, yeah. So let's put that into into the, into the mix as well. Here, uh, if we if we go out there with fear, oh, we've got, we got to defend against these guys. The stats would probably suggest you've actually this got to is, attack. This is where the team selection is important in a way, though, because if he did, let's, he won't, but let's say he did play Vice Downs and Suchek and we went 2 0 up, they're just going to start passing it around and think, right, let's knock this down. Off. Let's get the tempo right down. Let's lower our risk of injury, so on and so forth. It would make sense, but this is why if he plays Coventry and Lanzini, there's almost no excuse for them to lower the tempo. It's, it's, sorry, you just have to keep going. You just have to keep on impressing and showing us what you can do, actually. And this is where team selection is actually quite key, despite the fact that it's a nothing game. Oh, on, on, honest, honestly, he, he's... Um, I mean, particularly you get someone like Forson in there. I mean, don't stop. It, it's, it's like falling into a bucket of amphetamine or something when you watch him play. Do you know what I mean? He, he, don't, he don't stop. He, he, honestly, it's, it's ridiculous work rate and um so someone like that would 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 go all game all game long and and you're right wouldn't do that what you just suggested wouldn't would doesn't know that boy doesn't know how to crank it down at all um and, and actually someone like chester's as well was he on your list he's on loan at colchester but well, someone like chester's will probably uh, uh, allow me to finish my sentence um, someone like if he Chester's, wasn't on loan, someone, someone, no, someone like someone like Chester's um, will be watching on telly. That uh, was what I was going to say um, from his his room in Diggs in Colchester, and he'll be cheering on the team. That's so, what I was I'm surprised say. you've not picked Elise in your back four. Sonny <laughs> <laughs> Perkins up front, please. <laughs> Absolutely, quite right. Too shy, my friends. Too shy. Um, <laughs> can I get any final words in your score prediction, please? Um, yeah, look, look, get get us get loads of those youngsters on the bench. I've, you know, I've got a couple in the team there, and um, you know, you've you've picked a couple of youngsters as well. Let's have the bench full of um, no eight players on the bench. Honestly, don't don't worry about it. Just just get however many we're allowed. I probably don't know that nine. We had nine. How many were allowed? Twelve. Twelve on the bench. <laughs> Get Elise and Perkins on the bench. Do all do all the stuff. Bring an out of it, on. Um, and I and I think we'll um, you know, we should have a comfortable uh three one win. I will go to the West Ham. It's difficult. Do you know something? I'm really looking forward to this actually. We'll do our build up show. I'm actually quite looking forward to just seeing the lineup come out and hopefully it's a big night for a couple of the youngsters and stuff. And I can almost just Forget about the Premier League for a little bit because you know the the form and the records and stuff and that it's not it's not great at the minute and actually this is a nice distraction it's almost a positive yeah. distraction and I worry about Crystal Palace when we do our Palace preview on Friday I'll start worrying about the Palace game then I will start worrying about the Palace game but until then I'm gonna look forward to this and I just hope that Moyes gets the lineups right and like I said it's not because it's it's not the same as getting the Premier League 11 right. He has to get that right to get the three points. So sure. He has to get this 11 right so that he's got the right balance of experience and youngsters and players that need minutes and players with something to play for. It's a difficult one to get right for that reason. But I'm going to say, I'm going to say FCSB nil West Ham 2 just to throw a score out there. And we should, we should have enough to win. And I want to win the game as well. But anyway, we're going to disappear now. If you've enjoyed this preview, despite going to know nothing, please do drop a like on it. Subscribe to Hammers Chat. And if you fancy getting more Hammers Chat videos, head over to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. Links in description and the pinned comments of this video. It's the best time to join. Join now. You get charged right now. You don't get charged again until the 1st of December. You join on the 10th of November. You get charged on the 10th of November and the 1st of December. So you join today. You get more month for your money. 
How about that? Catching a bit.